Hey, Mr. Forrester, we're on to you. Okay, let's talk, since we're talking about basics, let's talk about education. Um, the Pure Voucher Bill never got off the ground. So there's this ersatz program where a, a uh, company can make a donation to, this, to a, a, a fund, uh, a charity, and then uh, they get a, a deduction to get to take that deduction, and then that sets up a scholarship for a uh, youngster to go leave a school and pay tuition at another school and take his, his uh, student per day, per diem cost with him. Um, are we doing the, ourselves a favor by abandoning schools that are in trouble, uh, making it easy for people to abandon schools that are in trouble, or are we um, uh, not ignoring the problem and how can we improve our schools rather than abandon them? And uh, Karen, I'm going to go with you on this. I don't believe that we're abandoning our schools, but I think we need to put our children first. I think that if a child and a parent decide that they want to go to a, ch a charter school or a cyber school, that they should be allowed to do that. However, I also think that in funding cyber and charter schools, that it needs to be at the exact level of funding. I think that if it costs $14,000 to send a child to um, a school district, a public school, and it costs four thousand to send them to the cyber school. Then the cyber school gets that four thousand dollars, and the remaining of the money would stay with the school district. I think that if the school district is failing our children and they are not getting the education that they need, that we should have the right to be able to go somewhere where we know that our children are getting the education that they so long to have. One minute, 30 seconds. I share your concern. I, our, our mandate, according to the Pennsylvania Constitution, Constitution, is to provide a public education. And we have to ensure that we do that for each child. Our economic development program really is based on education. If we can't make sure that we educate our children, we're not going to be the state that attracts businesses, no matter what red tape we're able to cut. But I also would agree with you, or, or would disagree, from the standpoint that the EITC program that you're talking about actually has been very successful in fostering schools where parents also pay tuition, like parochial and uh, private schools. And that's been quite successful. Successful. This new program, EITC2 or Vouchers Light or whatever you want to call it, that was passed in the last budget, actually um, reaches into the public schools and serves in those particular schools where they truly are failing. And a, a pressure re valve relief for some of these schools might be the best thing for the students that are remaining as well. Sometimes it's not just money, but also making sure the class sizes are smaller and that you can devote more time to students as well. I think that public education is something that we're still wrestling with. The only thing that I would disagree with Karen on is on the issue of cyber schools. Many of our public schools already offer cyber charter schools. If you have it in your school district, you should have to take that as your first option or then pay for if you want to go to another cyber school. We're spending about $4 billion on charter schools in Pennsylvania annually. It's a lot of money. And a lot of the guidelines, they're not operating under all of the same restrictions our public schools are. I know firsthand what it's like to have difficulty in a public school. And my daughter was one of them. And I had to pull her for a year because we couldn't get satisfaction from the school district. And when I brought my daughter home, I actually got my daughter back. And I can tell you that she finished her schooling by the end of December. And she was able, with the leftover time that she had, was to start another year of school. And I saw an amazing change in my daughter. And so our public school systems absolutely need help because we cannot leave the children behind that are in those schools. We have to be able to take care of them as well. But again, I think that if a child needs to go to a cyber or charter school or parochial school, that it should be their right. Again, I'm not looking to take all of that money from the, the school district, but to you know, make it fair and make sure that um, the exact level of funding goes into that. 
And just to add to that, um, my daughter is back in public school. She was only out for one year, and she's doing really well. She's thriving. So I'm glad it was to just hear what that. we needed. Thank you. One minute, Senator. I would only add to that that this is a different world. There, there are different options. Homeschooling, things that we used to think were out there, can actually be very successful. But what we have to remember is that, as, particularly as we look at property, us, us, school tax reform, that all these things have to be worked out. The charter school funding, the cyber <laughs> charter school funding, how that money will actually be allocated to school districts. That's all part of the mix that we've, we've got to deal with as we move forward on this. And I want, want to make sure that I don't abandon education. That's how important I think that it is.